as one of my viewers, Teresa, uh, hi, Teresa, uh, just uh, reminded me of this program that Bar 3 is doing this summer. It's a free month. And um, I'm going to link it in the space below, but you can go to, it's uh, bar3.com, and bar is spelled B-A-R-R-E, bar3, sorry, bar3.com slash bar3anywhere. And when you go onto the site, it says that from July 1st to July 28th, uh, join us um, join Bar 3 for a free month-long program to fuel your summer of discovery. You put in your name, uh, your email, your zip code. You have to check a box that you agree or that you've read with the terms and conditions and you join for free. And what it does is it gives you an online membership to their free classes and it gives you a little calendar and in fact i think i have it here let me see because i had download i wanted to see the program well, for it members of their group don't. sorry my tv was paused and now it's not um okay so it gives you this welcome letter it says set your intention a step-by-step -step guide so it gives you a little guide here it gives you um a calendar with different things to do and different information they provide for you and they tell they give you 15 percent off some of their bar three workout clothes and different things and um and then you get access to classes and then it also it says try bar three online or find your studio i don't know bar three has Let's see, it says Bar 3 has 140 plus studios throughout the U.S. and Canada, plus hundreds of streamable workouts you can do anytime, anywhere, wherever you go, Bar 3 is there. So I don't know if you can get a month free in a studio or if it's only uh, through the online thing. But anyway, if you have been intrigued by this, you should give it a shot. And if you don't have Bar 3 in your area, then you can access it online. So why not try for the month of July to have it for free? So from the 1st to the 28th. And my recommendation is when you first do it, you're, you're gonna be sore. And so I would say like the first week, do it three times. And then the next, and even if you're sore, just you, they tell you how to modify all the time. So just modify so that you're not killing yourself. And then they, um, then, then after the first week, do it again for for at least three days, maybe four days, and then try to stick with if 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 it feels you know decent to do that, then try to stick with four days because what I have been doing is four, sometimes five days a week, and that's where I've seen the results that I've gotten. Now, let me just say I have not lost thirty seven pounds just because I've done bar three. I've lost weight because I've been doing this form of exercise and I have changed my eating habits, not really telling myself I'm not eating carbs, I'm not eating meat. I mean, I don't eat much meat and that is a calorie reduction because meat and dairy products have higher um, numbers of calories. But what I really have been focusing on is getting three fruits and six servings of vegetables a day. And a serving of vegetables is a half a cup of cooked or a full cup of fresh. And so when you are eating three fruits and six servings of vegetables in a day, there's not a lot of room to eat a bunch of crap. You can't just eat, you know, Pop-Tarts for breakfast and pizza for dinner and expect to be able to fit in three fruits and six servings of vegetables in the rest of your day. So the idea is you're eating healthy, making some changes, but really I'm not talking about removing stuff. I'm mostly talking about adding in those healthy things and then doing bar three. And um, that is why I have gotten the results I've gotten. And I hope you guys will try it out. Like I said, I'll link it in the space below, but it's bar3.com slash bar3 anywhere. Okay, you guys, take a look in there. There are no eggs. That is an empty nest.
So John came out here this morning and he took a look in the in this thing here. No eggs. And we were trying to figure out, I thought, well, was a squirrel doing it? And John said, squirrels don't eat eggs. And, um, and I thought, well, did a raccoon get in there? And I did see the bird, um, was it yesterday or the day before, kind of hopping around out here a little bit um, agitated, probably because it found its nest completely empty. And a few days ago, there was a Stellar's Jay out here on the um, on the railing. Stellar's Jay is a blue jay that's like it's really blue. It's and they're big. They're big, like bigger than bigger than my hand. And um, and I we looked it up, and Stellar's Jays will eat other birds' eggs. And so I'm guessing that that stupid Stellar's Jay was the culprit, which makes me very sad. So my mom said that uh, I don't know if the bird laid eggs in here last year, but I think the year before. It, um, there was a similar bird, I don't know if it was the same one, that um, laid eggs in the same place. And um, then we had a, a late snow or something, got really cold, and the bird hung out there for several days and then finally abandoned the nest. Um, probably just got way too cold for it. But I just feel bad because, you know, I wanted to have little birdies out here, and I feel bad for the mama bird. And... And uh, that's nature for you. Hi, you guys. It's Monday, and today started out with a jolt. Um, <laughs> sorry for this no makeup face, but um, I was sleeping, and John, at, it was like five o'clock, and John comes in the bedroom and he goes, Get up, the cats are out. And I was like, What? And um, he said, The door was open. So the front door was open, like, like not all the way open, but probably two feet. And I have no idea. I mean, obviously I went in cause I was the one who used the door last. Obviously I went in and kind of shut the door and it didn't completely latch shut. And then I'm always trying to say to John, when we get ready for bed, you know, to like, we check the doors. We have, um, we have wooden blinds. Can you? see them there, Oops, if I can point the right way, um, you know, to go and close the blinds and things like that. And typically John just like, okay, we're going to bed and he just walks back to the bedroom. I'm like, we have to put the house, you know, we have to make sure that the garage door is closed and that the light in the garage is off and, you know, different things like that. So anyway, it is my fault that the door didn't latch and I didn't check to see that it was locked. So um, he realized, thankfully, he heard this and he realized that something was going on because he heard the crows outside just squawking away. And they will do that if there is some kind of intruder. And so John thought that there was a coyote out in the yard or something and that's why the, the crows were squawking. And then when he saw the door open, he was like, oh, one of the cats is out. Because in the past, when we've had cats that went outside, the crows would, would jump from tree to tree and, and just squawk and even dive bomb them. Like, murderer, don't be fooled, there's a murderer out here. And um, my previous cats, uh, Joe and Steve, and even Mary when she went outside before, um, you know, would be like, oh you know, help, help. So, um, so that's what, that's what got him up. And so, uh, we found, we found Chad inside the house. He's kind of a scaredy cat, but Mary was outside. She was on the side of the house and the crows were not gonna, they were not gonna, there wasn't going to be any mystery over where Mary was because they were going to announce her presence. So we um, we got her. She was a little freaked out because the crows were bothering her, but we got her in the house, and now we just need to make sure that that, that door latches. And better yet, when I come through that door, especially just to make sure that I just lock it. Hi, you guys. Uh, well, I just took Monica to her play date, and several of you asked if... Uh, if I'd be able to show her at her play date. And so I do have some clips to show you. 
we got together at two o'clock in the afternoon, which if I had thought better of that, I would not have arranged for that time because it was pretty warm. And while they did have shade in their yard, um, the place, the grassy area in their yard was mostly not shaded. And they, they of course were super excited and running around and everything. And Monica, because she has a smashed face, does not have a good cooling system. So she overheated. So I was kind of trying to, um, like there was a water dish out there and I was kind of putting some water on her tummy and, um, and then getting her to kind of settle down a little bit. And then she kept, of course, wanting to go run and play and then kept overheating. And at one point she threw up. And so I was like, all right, we gotta, we gotta just stop this and, and get her cooled down. So, so I got, um, went over to their hose faucet and the water coming out of that was, was very cold. So I got her completely soaked and just, you know, sat her, put her, you know, put her on a leash and just sat her right next to me and just made her rest. And sweet little Indy, came over and just laid next to her. He, he just thinks she's the best. Like, like she is his girlfriend. He's got a serious crush on Monica. And uh, does Monica have a crush on him? I don't know. She likes him, but you can tell that Monica knows that she's the older one. And he was just following her around like, I'm not worthy. <laughs> so it was very, very cute. Um, then they finally, once once she started to cool down, the, um, the, we got some cloud cover and a breeze, and then they started doing the normal play thing. They would play and run around, and then they would both take a rest for a minute. And then they'd run around and play, and then they would take a rest for a minute. So we decided that the next time we get them together, we're gonna do a morning thing when it's much cooler, because we have, 30 to 40 degree temperature differences between day and night. So we can get up in the morning and it's 51 and then it will get to 84. So really huge temperature differences. So if we get together at 10 o'clock in the morning, it will be a vastly different temperature. For him, it wasn't a big deal because he's a labradoodle and he has a, a long nose and, and that helps to cool them off. But dogs with the smashed face, they call them brachial cephalic. Uh, they they don't cool off very well so so anyway that was the only drawback of the whole thing but otherwise they had a great time and then when we were separating them so we could leave because they were together for two hours and when they were we were separating them he they both were barking he was outside and and just woo, 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 you know just calling for her. and she started buffing when she heard him she was like where are you where are you and it's buffing back and it was very cute so um, this couple um, they're getting married in a few weeks so we'll probably get them together one or two more times before they go out of town to where they are getting married and then they'll be gone for a few weeks I think with their honeymoon and stuff and then we'll probably start getting them together for regular play dates after after that so so nice so this will this will be kind of nice because if we get together once a week with our dogs then it gives us the opportunity to have two days a week where Monica can play and only one of those days we have to pay for <laughs> so so anyway um yeah all that to say uh here are the two of them having a good time okay we have a little play date friends here are we wearing out <laughs> want to get some water monica she's like well i would but there's a big face in there. <laughs> Okay. Not used to He's a puppy. It's not and an only child at that. <laughs> well, she's an only dog.
So you guys, I thought I would show you this healthy, low-cal snack. These are red grapes and they are frozen. So you just um, wash the grapes and dry them off, put them in a little freezer bag and stick them in the freezer overnight. And then you've got these little um, snacks. They're obviously grapes are mostly water because they're so cold. You can't just pop a whole bunch of them in your mouth at one time. You can chew on them, suck on them, whatever. And they're tasty and super sweet, concentrated sweetness. And so it's just a, a nice way of getting a little sweet snack without eating candy or something like that. And it sort of slows you down on the number of grapes you eat. Things I got in the mail today. Uh, I use this, um, these two products, Grand Lash MD and Grand Brow by Grand Cosmetics. And these I have found to be very effective for growing and thickening eyelashes and eyebrows. And I still have a little of my lash stuff left from the last kit I got. The brow, um, the brow one is empty. And I have just, my eyelashes are ridiculously long. I mean ridiculously long. And my eyebrows, well I wouldn't say that they've gotten terribly thick. They definitely are thicker and I've even had to pluck my eyebrows a little bit. So I got some more of that. I got this from Ulta. I also got another container of my current favorite mascara, which is by Stila and it's called Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. I love this because it thickens and lengthens the eyelashes. I really like this. And then I got a container of No More Baggage. It's Dr. Brandt um, Needles No More, No More Baggage. It's the stuff that flattens the puffs under your eyes. Now I had seen this on Amazon for $25. And I started reading reviews and it looks like there are some people out there selling fakes of this product and they were even comparing the actual product to what somebody had said was a fake and it had Chinese writing on the back and they said the product didn't work. So I decided that, you know, better safe than sorry. So I bought this from Ulta and it was $42. But the container I have that I got in a FabFitFun box in January still has product in it. Probably will last me another, gosh, at least another month, if not more. So January, February, March, April, May, just six months. So, so this is $42. I figure $42 is not bad for something that actually works and lasts for more than six months. Okay. Then I got this from Amazon. This is called Barkeeper's Friend. I originally had gotten it in a powder. This is a liquid and it is a really great cleaner. You want to wear gloves when you use it, but it will remove, um, I, I mean, it'll get hard water stains off of things and it will, I mean, even like, okay, like this on the bottom of this pan it will get that stuff off of there and make it look like new. So it's pretty amazing stuff. You just need to make sure that you're wearing gloves when you use it. Um, it it's not like it's gonna burn you, but you, don't, you just don't want it on your hands. So um, anyway, and it came with this thing, so I didn't pay extra for it, it just came with it a non-scratch scouring pad and so if you are using it on a difficult um, thing what Mary stop Mary you want to say hi to everyone Mary oh you're gonna show your butt that's nice Mary hi yeah there you go you're be she's being very talkative today yeah hi hi pretty girl yeah Okay, anyway, so this, that, that's the nice thing about Barkeeper's Friend is that it doesn't scratch surfaces, and so then this pad, the scouring cloth, feels scratchy, but apparently it's not supposed to scratch, so, yeah. And then, one more thing, it's in the freezer. There's Monica. Hey, Monica. Okay, this is called a licky mat. It's silicone. And you take this thing and you spread, 
either peanut butter, you want to make sure it doesn't have any sweeteners like xylitol or something in it. Um, you can put um, peanut butter, you can put yogurt, uh, what else did they say, pumpkin. You can take the dog's food or treats and soften them in water. And then you smear it in this mat and freeze it. And then, and I just put this in about 15 minutes ago so it's not frozen. But then you put it out and the dog just licks it. And it occupies their time. And Monica's been digging in our flower pots lately. So I figured, you know, she's probably bored and I'll give her something to do. And then this is also supposed to be good because uh, with them, licking is a soothing behavior for dogs. And also when they lick, it promotes good digestion. It also, um, because they're licking on this uh, textured surface, it cleans their teeth and it also cleans their tongue. So it helps to improve their breath. And so, yeah, I'm gonna freeze this. This is peanut butter, of course, and so I'm gonna freeze this up and then see what she does with it, and I'll show you. Okay, there's Monica and her licky mat. She's definitely into this. And she's licking. <laughs> see, how, see how long she goes for this. She was just outside eating a plastic stick she had found. So this is definitely better than that. Mm -hmm.